challenger. You don't have a challenger this morning. And so God, right now, I cry out for the ones, the ones that feel worthless this morning, the ones that feel that they've been forgotten. I cry out for them this morning. And I say that you are not forgotten. Though you may feel worthless, God calls you worthy. The Lord God of heaven calls you worthy this morning. He calls you loved. He calls you precious this morning. And so I speak to isolation this morning. I speak to guilt and shame and condemnation, and I cast it down. I break the back of the enemy this morning. I declare that you have no place in the hearts of the children. You have no place in the hearts of the children. I break the back of the enemy this morning. I declare that you are greater than what you've been through. I declare that your past does not define you. Where you have been is not where you're going to stay. I declare over you this morning that greater are the days that are before you than the days that were behind you. And Lord, right now, I just declare healing over your past. Healing over the past. Because God, you don't want us to just shove it down and forget about it. God, you want to heal it. You want to heal it this morning. So God, we are asking for it. You are the God who heals. So God, we call on your name and we're asking you to do what you say that you do. We're asking you to do it this morning, God. And so God, I just declare. God, I just say, Abba, we belong to you. Abba, we belong to you. We belong to you. There's a chain-breaking anointing in this house this morning. I don't know if you can feel it, but I can. I'm going to read the word of the Lord that he's given me. But I'm telling you what these students are praying, what the Lord has spoken to me, is that the back of shame will be broken over this house. If you've walked in here with a spirit of shame and you feel like because of your weak, you can't worship, because of your weak, you can't pray, whatever's in your past, you can't come down to this altar, I break that lie over you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is not what God has for you. And all you have to do today is walk in His mighty love. Walk in His great adoration that He has for you and say, no more. I have come in today to laugh in the face of my enemy, for He will not be victorious over me, over you, over this house. For the Word of the Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say, upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, say anointed me, to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me, say sent me, to heal up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn to preserve those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, the oil of joy. Thank you, Jesus, for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. They that might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and he might be glorified. They shall build the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the island shall be plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the nations, and their glory you shall boast. And here's the last scripture I'm going to read. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of humiliation, they shall rejoice over your portion. Therefore, in their land, in our land, they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Let's rejoice for the joy of the Lord is here. I want you to say the joy of the Lord.
The Father is already here this morning moving in our prayers. I want you to just take a moment, reach out to your neighbor, hug your neighbor, greet somebody, look for a new face, and then we're going to take the next few moments and just give all the glory, all the honor, and all the worship to our Father. that all over the room. Sing God, you're so good.
testify about his goodness. Woo! You're a good God. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. I've got so much to thank my God for. So many wonderful blessings and so many open doors for brand new mercies. That's why I praise you for this I give you praise for waking me up this morning.
Thank you, Jesus, for healing our bodies. Thank you, Jesus, for flooding in to the city of Chattanooga with your mighty river, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. That's it, that's it. Break open your alabaster box and let him know that you love him. You appreciate all he's done for you today. Ah! We won't keep silent. We won't keep silent. you should not bow low because Jesus defeated the darkness he has never lost a battle and who are you great mount that you should not bow low Jesus defeated the darkness he has never lost a battle who are you? And who are you, great mountain? That you should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And who are you, great Who are you, great
never will, he never will. <laughs> he never will, he never will. This is what I'm hearing in my spirit. So hold with me right here. Follow me here. Cause baby, there ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> Help me out. There ain't no valley low enough that could keep me from getting to you. That you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemies. You come back and you called it my victory. That you've even gone to win my war And your love is my greatest defense It leads me through the dry wilderness And all I did was pray All I did was worship. All I did was bow down. All I did was stay still. Can we sing it out this morning? The highest praise. Hallelujah.
Isn't it funny how as we mature in life that we forget some crucial things? Um, just yesterday, my daughter River, she's two and a half, uh, she fell and she started crying and immediately she walked over with the limp and lifted up her knee and said, Daddy, kiss it. I want to let you know she was playing outside earlier and it was a little wet in the backyard so the knee was a little less to be desired. And I, I picked her up and I kissed her knee. In a matter of seconds, she looked at me and said, all better, Daddy. All better, Daddy. Isn't it funny how as we get older, when things hurt in life, we say things like, suck it up? How about this? Stop crying. But it's in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, we see where Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. All those who are burdened and heavy laden, for I will give you rest. Why is it sometimes that when, when difficult situations and, and difficult problems arise, even sickness and disease, that we say things to ourselves like, suck it up, stop crying. But here we have an example of a savior who is saying the very opposite. He says, come to me, come to me. Dirty knees, messed up, bro. No matter where you were before you got, just come. Jesus also says, we just need to have the faith of a child, don't we? I just wonder if we could take just a few seconds just to close our eyes and evaluate our heart, evaluate our life, evaluate maybe even our health today. And to ask the question, have I been sucking it up and fighting it back instead of just going to our heavenly father who in a minute and in an instant can take it and make it all better if that's you today and you're like there's some things going on in my life that I really need his yoke and his burden because it's easy and light. I really need some rest in my soul. If that's you today, could you just get out of your seats real quick? Maybe you're sick in your body and you're saying, I'm done, I'm done with this. I'm ready just to receive healing. I'm ready to walk forward in the victory that God has promised me. If that's you, could you come real quick? Real quick. We have pastors in our prayer team. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. He doesn't care what it is. Can we just give God praise for that fact, that he doesn't care what it is? He says, come, come, come here, come here, come here. I don't think there's any magic in my kiss, but I think there's something that happens when we encounter the love of a father. If you could just extend your hands real quick for those who are down here praying. We're just gonna pray right now, corporately for them. Father, right now, you know exactly the need. You know exactly the sickness, the disease, the health problems, the family issues, maybe even the, the, the marriage difficulties. But God, right now, we just ask that in your grace and in your mercy, that you would come and meet us right where we are today. Father, we just ask that we would just purely encounter your love and that you would make it all better right now. Find rest my soul in the presence of Jesus for he is here with us and he's given us freedom. Find rest my soul in the presence of Jesus, for he is here with us, and he's given us freedom. Find rest, my soul, in the presence of Jesus, for he is here with us, and he's given us freedom. Find rest, my soul, 
us freedom, and He's giving us healing, and He's giving us healing. Find rest, my soul, in the presence of Jesus. Jesus. In the presence of Jesus, He is here with us. He is here with us, and He's given us freedom. Find rest, my soul. Find rest, my soul. In the presence of Jesus, He is here with us, and He's given us freedom. If we could do one more thing, if you could just grab the hand of your neighbor as a point of contact and agreement. This weekend we have our young our youth conference called Wild Ones here, and we have three to four hundred students coming from all over the nation to come into this place for this weekend. And I believe that they're going to leave differently than the way that they came. That this is going to be a place where they come and God deposits and downloads a word for their generation and for their region and their city and their church. And that they'll come here and they'll have a flame to take back home. So just agree with me in prayer real quick. Father, right now, we bathe this weekend in prayer. And God, we just ask that you would show up like never before. And God, that you would just reveal yourself to this generation. Lord, I thank you right now that there will be baptisms of the Holy Spirit, baptisms with boldness. Father, I pray that they would just come and they would receive from you and that wherever they've come from, when they return, God, that they would shake the area for the kingdom of God. Lord, I thank you right now that you're going to use this conference to just touch their churches, refresh their pastors and their leadership. Lord, right now we just declare that this would be a revival starting conference, Lord, and this generation for this nation. God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, and God, we call it done. We call it done. Let not one van have any trouble getting here. Keep every single student safe. Lord, I thank you right now for supernatural refreshing for every leader, for every youth pastor that is coming. That God, that they would walk into the room and that the breath of God would breathe on them fresh and new life. Father, we, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, and we all say, come on, amen, amen, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Horton, our, uh, one of my spiritual fathers, he always says, something happens when you seal it with a shout. And can we just seal what God has done up here today with a shout? Come on, let's just, uh, hallelujah! You're good. You're good. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. I'm Pastor Romari, and I'll be helping Pastor Josh do announcements today. Um, how many first-time guests do we have in the house today? If this is your first time, would you raise your hand? Don't be shy. There you guys. There you. Hi. How are you? It's good to see you. Come on, RTTN. Can we give these guests an amazing, warm redemption to the nations? Welcome. We are glad that you're here today. 
If this is uh, your first time, we'd love to connect with you either in the Connection Center or behind me. As you can see, if you text guest to 200-4933, just a few short questions, and it'll just get us to better help you and serve your family. We are glad that you're here and in the house today. And if you are new or you've been here for a little bit and you are ready to take the next step, find out more about our vision, our mission, our ministries, who is all on the team, how can I help, how can I jump in, Connect Track is the place for you. And so Connect Track is gonna be this Wednesday night at the Together Cafe, and it starts at seven. You can drop off your children, your youth, and then come and join us as we dive into who we are, what we're about, and how can you, you can get connected to the family. You can sign up on the app, online, or you can come and see me after service. Yeah, yeah. Listen, like I said before, this weekend's Wild Ones, who's excited? Yeah, yeah. Real quick, if you're a part of the serve team that helps Wild Ones happen, could you just raise your hands real quick? Lord, give them a supernatural grace for teenagers right now. We thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, but we'll forget. Also, also an incredible minister Saturday night, Tony Suarez will be here. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, for all of our students in Firebrand or of those of that are visiting today, registration is still open. And you can register at ruachglobalnetwork.com or you can go to our church website, rttnchurch.com, to go to the events page and sign up there. Also want to let you know that this coming March, on the 2nd, we will begin our congregational fast and end with our signs and wonder service here on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. The sanctuary will have open times of prayer for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 7 a.m., 12 to 1 p.m., and 7 to 8 p.m., and all are invited and welcome to join and participate. You forgot that he has to give me the microphone. And lastly, House Fires is going on. If you've been to House Fire, can I hear some noise? There it is. That's so amazing. We have almost 200 people through our house fires in all of our areas, Cleveland, Hickson, Harrison, Chattanooga. I could keep on. And registration is live now for our March house fires. You can re-register for the one that you went to already in February, or you can join a new one. We want you to get connected. If you are finding yourself here for a while and you go, I want to dive deeper in relationship and community and fellowship and get to know others while we talk about the word of the Lord, House Fires is the place for you. So again, you can go online, you can go on app, you can come and see us outside if you have any questions, but don't miss out on amazing fellowship that can occur throughout the week. Amen? Amen. 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 And speaking of house fires for Forge tonight, where's my Forgers at? All my young adults in the house. We will be in Cleveland at Lee University's Leonard Center at 6 p.m. It's welcome to all young adults. 18 to 35 year olds please come it's going to be an incredible life-changing evening thank you so much who's ready to give to the lord today come on amen last week i was in athens with pastor chris ryan and i just want to do something i just want to give honor where honors due to the leadership of pastors kevin and devin and then pastor chris and amy and the team in athens i want you to know it was an incredible service in athens tennessee so can we give god praise for what he's doing all over the place while i was there pastor chris made such an incredible point during the offering time and it impacted me so much i stole it for today um, and he said this he says that god doesn't just want our okay or average offering he wants us to give a, an extravagant offering and in the moment in the old testament we see where they give so like david when he was uh, dedicating the temple to the lord he brought so many bulls that it was the equivalent to almost 12 million dollars it was an extravagant offering and then and then we also see in the new testament that another extravagant offering, astronomical, was a woman that had two mites. And she gave all that she had to the Lord. And that's one of the things that I want to just challenge us today with, is that it's not so much the amount, but it's the heart. Pastor Kevin has always said this, give where you live. Amen. Tithe belongs to the Lord. That's 10%. And offering is anything above and beyond that and so today i just ask that you would give where you live and let that be an extravagant offering for you today father we love you we thank you so much 
for your word. We thank you, Father, that, that you know our needs. God, I know that there's people in this room today with fixed incomes, and, and God, the job situation is a little shaky, but God, I thank you that when we trust you, Father, you said, will I not open up the windows of heaven? And Father, right now, I just ask that you would continue to bless each and every one of us financially so that we can continue to give out of an abundance of our heart back to you, that, God, we would see the kingdom of God expanded, that we would see missions expanded, local feedings expanded, God, that we would just continue to show your love in the city of Chattanooga and surrounding areas all the way across the globe. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. Bless us today as we give. We thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Come and give. Please stand and bring it up. Good morning, Redemption to the Nations family. Listen, I love you, and I know you're having a powerful time in worship this morning. We're getting ready to go into the Word of God, and I wanted to introduce today's speaker. He's been used all over the kingdom of God in helping churches get from one level to the next. Ministers move from one place in the kingdom to another level of influence. He has a reputation and a resume of being an amazing servant, a lifter, someone who can come in and be a part of taking things to the next level. And he had been helping us as we were on a search for our executive pastor at the end of last year. And somewhere in the middle of all that conversation, God got involved and the person that I was wanting to help me find the executive pastor actually became the executive pastor. And he is a man of God that has been used by God in amazing ways. And we're honored that he is a part of this church family. He and Stephanie and their beautiful girls are an amazing godly family that the Lord is using in many, many different ways to impact different people. But we're glad they're a part of our family and they're here this morning. He's going to come and preach the word. You're going to receive them and you're going to help them and God's going to take us to the next level today. And I want you to know this while he's preaching here, I was supposed to be in Guatemala. My passport got rejected. And so while he's preaching in Chattanooga, I'm actually preaching in Athens today and surprising them. They have no clue I'm going to be there. And uh, we're all going to have a great time as a big redemption family. Help me welcome our executive pastor and help him preach. Pastor Richie Hughes, I love you, sir. How many of you are ready to get on a bus and go to Athens to hear Pastor Kevin preach? <laughs> Thank you so much. Please be seated. This truly is the most loving church in the world. That's the aspiration. That's the mission statement that I learned about when I started following RTT. And I'm so honored and so impressed to, to just be around each of you. And as I get to know each of you, it, it becomes more impressive the work that God is doing here, the service that you guys are providing for this community, the work that is taking place globally. 
it's an honor to be here today with you. Thank you for this opportunity. I, I, I told him, he texted me last night, and he said, are you locked and loaded? And I said, no. I said, uh, I stopped preparing when your passport got rejected. And I stopped praying. And he said, you're a liar. <laughs> and he said, you're preaching in Chattanooga. End of discussion. And I said, no, sir, I will be in Athens hearing my pastor preach. And he said, nope, you will be in Chattanooga. So I'm in Chattanooga. And the guy that I love to hear preach and want to hear preach is in Athens. So that's the way things work out. But at the end of the day, it's his football as he spiked and broke things three or four weeks ago. So I have to do what he says. I am thrilled to, to be here. I, I, I jokingly tell people all the time, you know, how can you be so good administratively, be so good in the Word, be so incredible, able to sing, be such a loving pastor who is great at the bedside and the funerals and the weddings, how can you have all of that wrapped into one pastoral team? Pastors Kevin and Devin Wallace, the dynamic duo. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the Terminator. They are the Seminators. <laughs> and no one can fill this pulpit, but I'm going to do the best I can today. The way I look at Pastor Kevin is he, he's all that and a full head of hair. <laughs> and it, it really irritates me. There are parts of me that are envious and parts of me that are just ticked off at him. You know what I'm saying? And she's, she's so powerful. She's a woman of God. And that 10 to 10.30 half hour when she's down here leading prayer, miracles do happen. Amen. I'm honored to be joined by my wife today. Stephanie, stand up. I'm going to need a ride home after this. Stand up. Isn't she beautiful? Hallie, stand up. Junior at Lee University. Kaylee, stand up. Freshman at Lee University. And wherever they go, they bring a whole posse. So we got two rows full of kids from Lee University, and, and I'm honored to have them with me today. If you are a single man, all you need to know is that she married me. Miracles still happen. I am a part of the offspring of those two beautiful, unbelievable daughters. People question that, but I know those are my kids. If you're still single, God has a plan for you, and he's got somebody like that. Well, maybe not like that, but somebody out there for you. Uh, we're going to get right into the Word today. We've already had church, amen? amen? Wow, what a powerful, powerful worship set. So proud of our worship team. They're incredible. We're going to two, two verses today, two scriptures. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Philippians 2, also turn to Romans 12, Philippians 2. Romans 12. As you're turning, I heard about Sarah. See, Sarah's the church gossip. She's the self-appointed arbiter of all the church's business, and she kept sticking her nose in everybody's business and running her mouth. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Several members of the church were very unappreciative of her activities and all of her postings on social media, but they feared her so much that they never said anything to her. They never called her out because they didn't want to be a victim of her assumptions. She made a mistake, however, one day when she accused George, who was a new member of the church, of being an alcoholic. It seems that Sarah had driven by the town's only bar and seen George's pickup truck parked in front of the bar, so she automatically made the assumption that because she saw his truck outside the bar, she knew exactly what he was doing inside the bar. Now, George was a quiet man, a passive man, he did not deny anything. He did not defend himself. He simply walked away. However, later that night, George parked his pickup truck in front of Sarah's house. <laughs> and he left it there all night long. <laughs> Tell somebody, don't gossip. <laughs> Speak positive. positive. Get rid of the negative. Amen. Amen. Romans 12. 
I'm going to read out of the NIV, then I'm going to read out of the MEV, modern English version. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Somebody say joyful. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. I'm going to read that again. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. I'm actually trying to have that stricken from the Bible because that's hard for me. I'm just kidding. How many of you know it's hard to bless those who persecute you? How many of you know it's hard to bless those who curse you? How many of you know it's hard to pray for Sarah's good when she's running her mouth about you? Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. You know what that means? Celebrate their wins. Pastor preached last week about it was hard when he got that gift that retired the dead of the church because he knew some people would not celebrate that win with him. They would be envious of him. They would be jealous of what God was doing. Celebrate the wins. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. That's the people who are hurting. Those are the people that are suffering losses. Mourn with them. Choose empathy. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Be willing to associate with people of low positions. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone for evil. Evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. I tell my kids all the time, right receives rewards. Nike says just do it. I say just do right. If it's possible as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. The part of the MIV, MEV I like, it says bless those who persecute you. Bless those and do not curse. Be of the same mind. I like that wording. Be of the same mind toward one another. Be of the same mind. I want to talk today a lot about the mind. Real quickly, in Philippians 2, Philippians 2 says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement, elbow somebody and say encouragement, from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, there's that word again, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves not looking to your own interest but each of you to the interests of others in your relationships with one another have the same mindset there it is again the MEV says it this way esteem the NIV says value the MEV says esteem the others better than yourselves Look, each of you, not only to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. I want to talk to you about a, a subject, and I had not planned on preaching this, to be honest with you. I was going to preach something else, but I got so intrigued with Pastor's Radar series. Wasn't that good? Relationships, recognizing and discerning associations and relationships. It just fired me up, and I started... Every week, I started, the Lord started dealing with me about a month ago when he said, Hey, i got to be in Guatemala. Why don't you preach? I said, As long as you're not in the country, I will preach. And there you are in Athens, and I want to be in Athens hearing you. Anyway, I'm getting over it. My therapist says three more visits. <laughs> but I started having these thoughts about relationships because, you know, Jesus was the most relational person who ever lived. Jesus put the fellow into fellowship. And I started having this thought, and, and my wife has this crazy wording that she calls me. She calls me a lot of names, some of which I will repeat, some are none of your business. Her therapist says three, I'm just kidding. But she has this sixth sense, that, that recognizing and discerning. How many of you know that women have this gift of discernment? It's like, guys, we have five senses, they have six. That sixth one is discernment. They see things and understand things and read people differently than we do, and they're better at it than we are. I'm easy. Man, you make a good first impression on me. Oh, they're so great. 
I'll tell my wife, don't you, just, I love that, that couple. They're so amazing. They got it all together. Do you see their family? He works at so-and-so, and she's got a job, and they're just incredible. And they asked us to go to dinner. Should we go to dinner? With, mm. What do you mean? They're cool. They look good. Did you see that? They, they're all, mm. She's always right. About six months later, it's like, I didn't really want to go to dinner with them anyway. <laughs> discernment. The amazing discernment of a woman. So she tells it this way. She says, you know what? You've got reverse paranoia. I'm like, what is reverse paranoia? She said, you think everybody is out to do you right. <laughs> you think everybody likes you. You're a sucker. You meet somebody, you automatically dislike them. You just let them into our circle of friends and, and love them and think they're great and think, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. That's why we balance. That's why there's unity of one flesh and one spirit. She sees things that I'm blindsided by, and she's always right. The mind of Christ is the Word of God. We've talked a lot about being like minded, being of one mind being of one spirit, unity. The mind of Christ is the word of God. The NIV says value. The MEV says esteem. That word esteem means respect and admiration for another person. The word self-esteem means how you see yourself, how you value yourself, your own self-worth. The Bible says to esteem others higher than yourselves. That word means to prefer. It means to appreciate. It means to encourage others. Isn't that what Jesus did? Isn't that what the red letters are? See, too many times we think it's all about teaching and instruction, but a lot of times it's just encouragement. See, Jesus is teaching us what to do, how to do it, and then he's telling us, hey, you can do it. You can do it. It's going to be okay. I've got your back. He's encouraging us. He's lifting us up. He's supporting us. He's giving us strength. And encouragement. The question I have for you today is, who do you do life with? Who are those relationships pastor's been preaching about for three weeks? Are your relationships Monday through Saturday the same as they are on Sunday? Those people that you share life with, are they like-minded? Do they have similar values? Do they have similar convictions? Do they believe like you? Do they lift you up or do they drag you down? Do they encourage you? My, my father-in-law used to call them Debbie Downers. Are they Debbie Downers? Party poopers. Or do they lift you up? When you see them, does your spirit jump? Do you get excited or when you see them, do you go, oh God. Do they have similar morals? Do they put you in awkward positions when you're together? Who are you living with? Who, who do you do life with? Who, when you're in tough times, tumultuous, turmoil, do they run to you or did they run from you? Do they pray for you or do they gossip about you? The greatest battle of our time, in my opinion, is not, it's not terrorism. It's not it's not politics. It's not the great divide. See, I believe the greatest challenge for this generation is the battle of the mind. The battle between right and wrong, good and evil. The battle of the mind. I got four steps today I want to give you real quick. Four steps. Four steps to having the mind of Christ. Four steps to achieving reverse paranoia. See, I believe you're pulling for me today. I believe that there was a moment of disappointment when the guy with all the hair wasn't here and the guy with the cul-de-sac got up. There was that moment you thought about going to Athens. You looked at your watch and thought, I could still make it. But now we're here, right? So let's dig in, okay? Number one, focus on what we do have. Focus on what we do have. Pastor said last week, you can't be paralyzed by paranoia. That's my line. 
You can't be paralyzed by parents. Focus on what you do have. Why do we spend all of our time wanting something that we don't have, something that we really don't need, instead of celebrating? It is no accident and no coincidence that they sang three songs about the goodness of God. And then I'm going to mess with you in a minute because we're going to talk about Zechariah and Zerubbabel and that mountain. They sang my whole sermon before I ever preached it today. The goodness of God. Be thankful. Be thankful. Why are we not more thankful for the things that God has already done for us, for the things that we do have? Why are we so envious and jealous of people who have things that we don't, unless it's a full head of hair? Focus on what we do have. When we focus on the mind of Christ and we start celebrating what we do have, we initiate and instigate the mind of Christ. It becomes contagious. We become a contagious Christ follower. We become that, that person that people want to be around. We don't become Debbie Downer. We get ready to rumble, amen? Focus on what we do have. Adam and Eve had it all. They had the perfect life. Genesis 2 tells us that the two of them shameless and sinless, walked in the garden of perfection, this euphoric nirvana place. And in the cool of the day, they got to walk hand in hand and talk to God Almighty, the Creator. I love that part, the cool of the day. You know what the cool of the day is? That's in July when it's 95. And it stays light till about 9.30, but about, oh, about 8 o'clock. When the sun gets below that first line of the trees... That's when you get out and you enjoy the day because the heat index drops about 20 degrees. The temperature may not, but the heat index does. That's when you get out and walk your dog. That's when you get out and take a run. That's when you get out and cut the grass. It's the cool of the day and it's the best part of the day. It's been hot all day, but you get in the cool of the day and you put on your pods and you listen to worship music. It's the best part of the day. Adam and Eve, the best part of the day, got to walk with God Almighty. And it wasn't enough. They wanted something they could not have, something that was forbidden, and they forfeited everything that they did have. See, the enemy knew that he could take their mind off, put them in an ADD state long enough that they would forsake and forfeit everything that God had given them to find something that was not even worth it. One moment that was not even worth it to forsake and forfeit all that they had. A life of perfection. Wanting things that aren't even good for us. Things in relationships that aren't good for us. People who drag us down. We're blessed if you're here today. If you're here today, you are so blessed that, one, you probably had shelter over your head last night. You have a ride, if not your own ride, to church today. You either had breakfast or you're probably going to have lunch, so you got food on the table. You got nice clothes on your back and shoes on your feet. You are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Most of you have a good, dependable job, steady job. You're at the church that aspires to be the most loving church in the world. You get to hear pastors Kevin and Devin every week. You get to hear some unbelievably anointed worship teams get up here and sing the best songs that we could possibly every week. Why would we ever want anything more? See what the enemy says? He says, if I could just get their mind off that, though. What do I got to do to get their mind off of it? Oh, you know what? I'm going to tell them, what if you had a better job and you made more money? And, and what if you got a new car instead of that one that's more than enough? But you need some new shoes because that guy that you work with, got, he's got the new Yeezys, and you need the new Yeezys. And you need the new sweatshirt, the LeBron sweatshirt. You need this, that, and that. He, he knows that if he can get our minds, just like he did Adam and Eve, if he can get our minds off of what we should be thanking God for and what we don't have, he's got a chance at our soul. Jesus not only wants to be all we need, he wants to be all we want. Jesus wants the relationship with us. 
He wants to talk to us in the cool of the day. Truth be known, he wants it to be ongoing communication. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. True happiness is wanting what we have. It's being content with our contents. Jesus said, come and dine with me. Be a part of my life. He wants to do life with you. The first part of having a mind for Christ is to focus on what we do have. Number two, focus on staying in the moment. Focus on staying in the moment. A recent Harvard study tells us that 47% of our waking hours, our mind is somewhere that our body is not. Half of our day that we are awake, we are thinking about something that we are not doing. We are present physically and absent mentally. More interested in Instagram than interaction. ADD society. I'm having a face-to-face -face conversation with you, but I'm more concerned with checking my phone. Relationships. Focus on staying in the moment. What's happened to our relationships? My girls are here today, and I'm not going to embarrass them because the truth be known, your kids do the same thing. But they got this Instagram account, so I, I had to go get an Instagram account so I could stalk them <laughs> and watch and approve and see and make them delete. And not, I hadn't had to do that yet. Don't ever let me have to do that. Anything that they post. And, and I've, I've gotten so curious with this whole thing. It doesn't make sense to me. So my kids will post a nice picture of themselves, and I think they're really pretty girls. So there'll be all these likes, and then there'll be all these comments. And I'm reading through this comment, and it says, you are the most beautiful person I've ever seen. And their response will be, no, I'm not as pretty as you. You're more beautiful than I. The next one will say, I wish I was you. And they'll say, no, I wish I was you. And then the next one will say, you are so kind. I love you so much. And they'll say, you're kinder than me. I love you more. Then the next one will say, you are the goat, the greatest of all time. And they'll put a little emoji that says, no, you're the goat, 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 goat. <laughs> so I'm looking at all this and I'm thinking, oh, how sweet. My kid's got a lot of friends. Three hours later, we'll go to dinner and we'll be at Chick-fil-A. And then we'll walk one or two of those kids that commented on my kid's pictures. And they'll walk in and they'll see my kid and they'll look the other way. And I'll say, hey, isn't that so-and-so? And they'll be like, yeah. And I'm like, well, why don't you tell, dad, dad, be quiet. That's not how it works. You don't want to go talk to them? They said they wished they were you. That one said you were the goat. Dad, that's not how it works. Dad, dad. I don't get it. What's happened to our interaction? What's happened with our ability to talk face to face? Why do we text and not talk? We get a lot more accomplished when we talk face to face and you look in somebody's eyes. When I tell my wife I love her, I don't walk out the door and say, hey, I love you. Before I leave in the morning, I grab her and I embrace her. And I look her in those beautiful green eyes. And I say, I love you. Thank you for doing life with me. Amen. I'm passionate about you. You're all I want. Interaction. Interaction. The interest of others. Staying in the moment. Paul says in Philippians 2, With lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only for your own interest, but the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. What's Paul saying? He's saying, be mindful of the mind. Have the mind of Christ. Jesus modeled this continually. Jesus not only was master, savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. That old Gaither song. Jesus was the master of the moment. Jesus was the master motivator. Jesus was the master motivator who would say serve, who would say pray, who would say come, who would say follow. And he was the master motivator because he stayed in the moment. 
He focused on those that were around him. He was, he was ever mindful of looking people in the eye, teaching them, instructing them, encouraging them. No one modeled their relational life better than Jesus. And what Jesus taught us in a little bit over a thousand pages in your Bible was that you can sum this whole thing up in about four words. Just love God and love people. This, all of that. Love God, love people. See, in Matthew 22, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You want the mind of Christ? Focus on what you do have. Focus on staying in the moment. Number three, focus on the positive. Jesus was always seeing the good. You look throughout the Bible. He always saw the good. The liar, the denier, Peter, he called him the rock. I read one commentary that called James and John mama's boys. Jesus called them the sons of thunder. See, he saw the best in them back then, and he sees the best in you today. See, here, here's how I've got it pictured. When I think of Jesus and the way he sees me, I've got Kevin Wallace hair. I look a lot like Matthew McConaughey in Jesus' eyes. I'm perfectly photoshopped and edited, and so are you. He sees you in perfection. He sees greatness in you. He has great value that he's placed in you. You want the mind of Christ? Focus on the positive. Ephesians 4 says this, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, Sarah, gossiper. Only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. The Message Bible says, say only what helps for every word is a gift. When we were being raised, you know what I'm about to say. Mama always said, if you can't say something nice. Jesus saw the positive and today he sees the positive in you. Liars, sinners, cheaters. He sees greatness in us. He gives us great value. Jesus loves us. Think of, this, think of it this way. I think about Sarah. I think about, and you know who they are. You know who's on your social media. You know, you know the people that if they talk to you, they're probably talking about you. You know those folks? Think of it this way, though. I got reverse paranoia. I actually think if they're talking to you about me, they're saying nice things. If they're pointing at me across the grocery store and whispering, hey, they got to be saying something nice, right, Steph? They got to be bragging on me. What if we spoke blessings over all the people that we know? What if we started bragging on them behind their backs? What if we spent all our time building them up instead of beating them up? What if we focused on the positive? What if we saw the inherent good that all of us have instead of the inherent bad that is created from a sinful birth? Focus on the positive. What if we chose compliments over criticism? What if instead of waking up every morning and immediately turning on the TV to cable news, and it doesn't matter which channel you watch, you're going to be offended checking your Facebook and Twitter because that's going to offend me too. Somebody's going to come up on my timeline that I don't agree with. And so what if we got up every morning and flipped on some worship music? Amen. Flipped on pastor's message from the previous Sunday. Stopped worrying about cable news and social media and all the junk that's associated with it. What if we got up every day and said, I'm going to go out and catch somebody doing something good what about it in this overly paranoid world that everybody's out to get theirs and everybody's out to get ahead and everybody's out to do you wrong you looked at it and said everybody's out to do me right I'm blessed I'm highly favored the Cleveland Clinic one of the 
largest hospitals in America, Cleveland, Ohio, not Cleveland, Tennessee, <laughs> did a study and found that 80% of our thoughts daily are negative. 80% of this mind, 80% of the thoughts that go through this mind every day are negative. The average person, you know how, let me put it in these terms. They estimate that there are 60,000 random thoughts that enter our mind daily. That means 48,000 of them are negative. We spend our whole day thinking negative, thinking bad, being dragged down. And it says this, when you verbalize them, you compound them. That's why we don't need to speak negative. It compounds the issue, the challenge that you're already in. Our words matter. There is power in the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21 says, In the tongue lies the power of life and death. What are you using your tongue for? When you open your mouth, what comes out? Is it uplifting? Is it encouraging? Do you beat them up or do you build them up? And by the way, when you talk to yourself, say nice things. Because you are listening. Let me say it this way. Everyone in this room needs to be the CEO. We are all the CEO, the chief encouragement officer. Be your own CEO. Everybody needs a good clinical diagnosis of terminal reverse paranoia. Dr. Hughes is prescribing that you have diagnosis of reverse paranoia only to be cured with the power of positive thinking, the power of positive words, daily devotions and prayer time, worship music on your radios. I choose to believe that we can be paralyzed by paranoia or we can reverse the curse and turn that thing around. I'm going to believe the best in you. Will you believe the best in me? I'm going to speak positively about you. Will you speak positively about me? Spouses, we got a whole teaching that we do called qualities and quirks. We've all got qualities and we've all got quirks. Which are you looking for in your spouse? What are you looking for in your children, in your relationships? Are you looking for qualities and focusing on that or are you looking for quirks? Jesus always built up their confidence. Even though one would deny, one would doubt, one would betray. He was always building them up, always believing the best in them. Today, if you want the mind of Christ, focus on what you do have. Stay in the moment and be positive. Number four, focus on his promises, not your problems. They sang that song today from Zechariah. Who are you, great mountain? You will become a plain. You will be leveled to the ground because you're in my way and that's my God. Focus on his promises, not your problems. Jesus never looked at a problem. Jesus always knew the promise. Promises of God are yes and amen. And if I believe the answer is yes, that means that he's already done it. It's incumbent on, upon me to pursue him, to believe it, and have the faith to receive it. This is your year of yes. You want yes? You want those promises of yes? Magnify the master, not the mess. Jesus opened his mouth and he spoke to waves, he calmed storms, he tempered fevers, and he moved mountains. We use our tongue, when we use our tongue, we speak to faith, we speak to our belief, we encourage each other. Speak to your faith today. See, it's trust that takes us to the throne. When we trust in God, all things are possible to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The Bible says in Romans 4:17. Call those things that are not as though they are. You haven't gotten your breakthrough yet? It's not over yet. It hasn't happened the way you want it to? It's not over yet. Call those things that are not as though they are. One translation says, call into existence things that do not even exist. Call into being that which was, does, does not exist. Summons the things that do not yet exist as though they already do. God was speaking to Abraham and he called him the what? The father of many nations. 
a man whose wife's womb was dead, called him the father of many nations. He was speaking into existence things that were not yet. Sarah couldn't get pregnant. Called him the father of many nations. Abraham had faith. He believed. He was a friend of God. You know the rest of the story. The original translation says, ex nihilo. That means literally creating everything out of nothing. That's my God. Today, I challenge you to speak positive. I challenge you to focus on the goodness of God. Focus on what you do have. Forget what you don't. You know what you could do? You could get on version instead of Amazon. Y'all didn't like that, did you? Stay off eBay. Get on a Bible plan. Spend more time in the Word and less time in worry. Stop worrying and being weary about the week and stop, start winning the week. Go after it this week. Be ready to rumble this week. See, your father's up there right now, and he's pointing at you, and he's whispering good things to the angels. He's telling those angels, that, that, that guy down there that's struggling right now, that guy that has issues, that guy that has addictions, that guy that's got problems, that guy's the apple of my eye. I love that guy. That lady down there, she's got issues, she's struggling, she doesn't know, maybe she's got depression or self-esteem issues. I love that lady. I see greatness in that lady. You have no idea what I'm about to do with that lady. He's telling angels. He's whispering about you. He's bragging on you. He's building you up. Encouraging you on a daily basis. Stand with me. This week we're no longer going to be fixated on fiction. We're going to focus on the facts. These are the facts. Focus on the facts. Stop being worried about your week. Win the week. In a moment, I'm going to give an altar call. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. And we're going to come down and pray. And here's what I want you to understand. If any of this has spoken to you today, you need to understand that the person on your left and your right before you and behind you loves you. This is the most loving church in the world. That's what we are. That's what RTTN does. It's the DNA of this church been passed down from pastors Kevin and Devin. So when we give that altar call, somebody next to you is going to ask you, hey, do you want me to go down and pray with you? Don't be, don't be caught off guard. I'm giving you fair warning. But will you be bold enough to say, yeah, I need to go. I need a little boost. I need a little encouragement. I need somebody to build me up. I'm pretty beat up right now. I need that. So yeah, I'll go down. I'll pray. Thank you for going with me. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for having my back. Can we pray? Bow your heads. Lord, thank you for this time together. God, in this moment, nothing else matters. Nothing matters. Help us to put away all distractions. They're from the enemy. We curse them and bind them in Jesus' name. Today, Lord, free your people. Deliver your people from any issue and any challenge that they face in their life. Lord, we are more than victorious. We've read the last book and we win. Today, Lord, we're setting forth a path that will give us success. We're committing our lives to you. If that's your prayer today, I'm speaking to you. The Lord is nudging your heart and telling you that this is for you. This is your day. I want you to just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Hands all over the place. If that's you today, I want you to make your way down here. we got a prayer team coming. Second part of this, hey, Richie, I want to win the week. I'm weary and I'm worried, and I'm ready to go. I've been encouraged today. I'm going to get in the Word. I love the worship today, and I'm going to win the week. That's me. Get on down here to the altar. You want to put away worry? You want to get rid of the weariness? Get on down here. Maybe the Lord has touched your heart today and said, I need to speak more positively. I battle a little bit. I talk a little bit too much. Nobody's going to come during this part of it. 
you're bold enough, God will help you. God will deliver you from that. If you're battling a relationship and that relationship needs restoration, I challenge you to come down today. A spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, son, daughter, father, mother, friend. Relational issues. Come down and let us pray for you today. Let us spend some time in the Word and in worship. The last phase of this is, Richie, I don't know why. I just want to pray. I just want a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you today, make your way down here and let's pray. We're going to give it 30 seconds. I'm going to let LeBron and the guys play. We're going to have a corporate prayer, and I'm going to let you go a little bit early. But I would not miss this opportunity if I was you. I would hate to think that I left when I had an opportunity to pray through today with people who love me with people who want what's best for me, people who want to build me up. the audience. Stretch your hand this way and pray for those that have made a decision to come down and pray. Stretch your hand. Pray for them. Build them up. Encourage them in your mouth. Lift them up today. those of you that are in the crowd we're going to stay down here and we're going to pray I want everybody as you approach this week stretch your hands this way and let's pray Lord this week we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise we thank you for what we do have we vow this week to speak positively that we will build others up and encourage them God, I pray for peace, protection, prosperity, promotion, and productivity over every believer today. 
In Jesus' name, amen. You may go in peace. Those of you in the altar. Look at me right here. I want you to repeat after me. If you're in this altar, I don't care if you're a prayer worker. I don't care if you're being prayed for. If you're still in the audience, corporately, there's power in the tongue. I want us to.